Hello there, Star Wars toy fans. This is Jim, and welcome to my workbench. What you see on my workbench happens to be a 1983 Kenner TIE Fighter. This was one that my son picked up at a swap meet. We went to Monroe, Washington in uh, March of this year, and he happened to find this for $40, which was a great deal. And that's after we talked the guy down five bucks. It was originally 45 and uh, it was in actually great shape. The stickers were real good on the wings. Uh, the only problem was that there was heavy corrosion in the battery compartment. And I thought I'd put together this video because it has something that I've never encountered before on any of the ships. And so let's talk a little bit about this first. So if you have a vintage TIE fighter that has the electronics in there and it's not working and you want to take it apart and it's very quite simple to do. Uh, the first thing that you need to do is you need to remove the eight screws. So there's, they're all the same, by the way. So there's four here on the body and then two on each of the wing posts. Pull that apart and you'll see that you have uh, basically four wires. You have two blacks, one's positive, one's negative, and then you have a gray and then you have a green, which I, I believe are kind of interchangeable when it comes to, to the motor. But I, I, if you decide to take things apart, take a photograph or uh, do what I did. I decided to make a drawing so I had a reference material if I decided to take this apart again uh, for this video. Now, if things are not working, 99% of the time it's not your motor. In fact, of all the ships that I've repaired, and if you watch my videos, you know that I take these things apart when the motors aren't working. And uh, the only one that I've experienced that ever had a bad motor was the A-Wing and corrosion had gotten in this area and even rusted away the brush on inside the motor. And I can do a separate video on uh, how to take apart the motors if you want. But uh, you're going to have to have a, a, a stash of parts if you decide to do that. And my suggestion is these motors are so plentiful, just go get another motor <laughs> rather than try to repair it. That's that's really what I ended up doing. Actually, I think on the A-Wing, I ended up replacing this faceplate here because I needed something to match that. Well, or m match the motor where the gear was. So, uh, all right. So, so let's talk about uh, the rest of this. Most of your uh, continuity issues are going to be here because the batteries have corroded or possibly these just need to be, have, be a little bit polished up. Now, I was told by an electronics friend when I was working on the slot car stuff that there is a coating uh, that the uh, companies put on so that way the copper does not corrode. However, if there's a rust, if you want to call it that. However, if it's already corroded, it really doesn't matter. So you can polish it up in a number of ways. Uh, you can use a screwdriver to scrape it off, but that's going to scratch the, uh, the copper. You can use this, uh, a nail file. And if you can get in there, I used my Dremel tool and had a wire brush and just bzzz, kind of buzzed in there and would try to be very careful not to hit these plastic tabs. Uh, and then you can use some Brasso to polish that up if you so choose. Very rarely will it be an LED problem. It could be burned out, uh, but I doubt it. In all likeliness, it's just the fact that it's not getting an electrical current through. Now you notice that we have these spade connectors connected here. And this happens to be the positive side and that's happened to be the negative. So if you decide to disconnect those, that's uh, one of the first things you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to mark this. Notice I have some tape here. I marked that for the positive side. And this is just a real thin quarter inch uh, automotive tape. You can go to an automotive paint store or order it online. It's really great for masking off thin areas if you decide to do some custom painting. So what I had to do here, and this was the weird experience, is the corrosion was between these two plates. Now the two plates, what I mean is the negative plate here and the one that's connecting to this uh, plate here, which is the negative plate. And uh, so, you know, and this happens to complete the circuit. So the first thing I did was I got my voltmeter and I did a continuity check. Now you want to put that on ohms and... I'm going to alligator clip the negative side, okay? And all I'm doing is checking continuity. So it doesn't really matter if I've got the negative to the negative or the positive to the negative. Okie doke. And now 
we'll just do a test here and make sure that the needle's working. Yep, okay. So notice it's the same plate. Now we're gonna test here. All right, so the circuit is not complete. When I press the button, I should, oops. And our alligator clip went AWOL. Let's leave these little mistakes in, okay. And there we go, we've got continuity. Now it wasn't reading before. So what I ended up having to do was carefully take this screwdriver and go underneath that tab, okay? And then start scraping away at that copper. Now listen, you'll hear me get here scratching it. And I could literally hear the, uh, the, the corrosion go tss, 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 as I was scraping away. And I could take it apart, I suppose. If you look in here, you can see there's the plastic piece, and then this copper piece is there's a plastic pin that's got to fit in there. But I didn't want to risk breaking that plastic and trying to force that thing through. I thought, well, I'll just uh, scrape underneath and, and and make it happen that way. Now we'll go ahead and we'll put in the batteries. Okay. Right. And we should have sound, and we also have a light. Now, if you decide to take the motor apart and replace it, okay, I guess I don't need to take those out, and you want to test your motor uh, to make sure that's working too, uh, these have these little uh, connectors that slide right in, and they make contact with the brush. This green ones, uh, I don't know if that'll pull out really nicely or not. Now, I'm not going to pull on the wire. What you want to do is you want to pull on the connector part itself. There we go. Okay. And then you can test your motor out to see if it is actually working. Now, this is just a little 3-volt battery that you can get at uh, through Evan's Designs. He's a railroad guy, and I've left... Uh, links in previous videos on that and so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an alligator clip here to the positive and and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to shove these wires in to there and it should make the motor turn now these wires are pretty doggone thin and so we'll see if it goes there we go okay so that's a real easy way to test that if it's not working and uh then and, and this by the way happens to be three volts which is what you have here and if it's not working then what i would suggest doing is taking some oil and this you can use three in one or you can use this plastic oil and uh this is for plastic parts and just put a little dab there on the shaft and then rotate that by hand okay now according to my drawing this is why i did this uh, i should have uh, green on the bottom and gray on top and this is polarized for the uh, for the led okay should we get that in there Yep, this one slides in really nicely. Okay. And then just uh, just go ahead and uh, and try starting it and see if that thing see if things go. Again, chances are your LED is not going to be a problem, but if it is, then you'll have to replace that. And that's kind of a pain to get to because it's in this whole area here in that mechanism. And actually, now that I think about it, my tie interceptor, the LED, was burnt out and I had to replace it. And that was a real hassle, digging into that area. But, I mean, it's not impossible. It's something that you easily can do. So once you get that done, then it's just a matter of reassembling the whole body and putting things together. And uh, this is quite a process in and of itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to... First, show you how these pieces go together. So here's the wing parts. So you, it's kind of pretty ingenious. You have your spring, and you have your button, and then this piece 
just goes above and below where that tab is. And then those these little pins here go into those recesses. Now the spring dropped. Okay, little devil. All right, so we'll put that in. We'll do the other side. Again, we'll uh, assemble the spring. Put the sleeve over. Drop that in. Again, those go in there. The difficult part is the pilot seat. And I maybe I should have done that first. But you'll see these go into a slot back here. So what you have to do is kind of finagle it. And uh, then just slide that in. Oh, that's a easier than I thought. Okay. And then don't forget to put in the canopy class. Now the notch happens to go on the bottom. And uh, because you can see there's a little tooth here, and that goes into the notch right at the front. So that's how I know that goes at the bottom. Things fit together like so. And then we're going to reassemble it. And it's just a matter of screwing the parts back together. Well, I hope you found this video useful. And uh, please give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And we'll see you on another video on repairs for Star Wars toys.